important properties of concrete in its hardened state used by the designer during the design process of reinforced concrete structures are stress strain curve of concrete, modulus of elasticity of concrete, behavior of concrete under tension, creep of concrete, shrinkage and temperature effects in concrete. In this session, we will explore all these properties briefly. Stress strain curve. Typical stress strain curves of normal weight concrete of various grades obtained from uni actual compression tests are shown in the stress versus strain curve here. The curves are somewhat linear in the very initial phases of loading. The non-linearity begins to gain significance when the stress level exceeds about 40% of the maximum stress. For example, this curve corresponds to approximately ultimate stress of 25 megapascal. Approximately at 10 megapascal, which is 40% of the maximum stress, the curve becomes non-linear. Also, observation on different curves for different grade of concrete reveals that higher the concrete grade, like this is the higher grade concrete, this is the lowest grade. The higher the concrete grade, the steeper is the initial portion of the stress strain curve. As you can see, this initial portion of the stress strain curve becomes steeper the peak of the curve gets sharper as it can be seen the peak of the curves gets sharper and failure strain is reduced for low strength concrete the curve has a relatively flat top and a high failure strain as can be observed from this stress versus strain graph the maximum stress is reached at a strain approximately equal to 0.002 so approximately at 0.002 strain you can find the maximum stresses reached beyond this point an increase in strain is accompanied by a decrease in stress for design purposes IS456-2000 limits the maximum failure strain depending upon the nature of loading like you can turn page 69 and uh, see clause 38.1b for members under flexure the maximum failure strain is 0.0035 whereas in clause number 39.1a page 70 the failure strain is limited to 0.002 for compression member modulus of plasticity concrete is not an elastic material that is it does not fully recover its original dimension upon unloading it is not only non elastic it is also non linear that is the stress strain curve is non linear as shown in the stress versus strain curve so you can see this is the curve which is non-linear after a particular strain like if i talk of strain at this particular point once the loading is removed it can be observed from the graph that there remains some residual strain so this is the path which it takes for unloading and finally there is some residual strain so it signifies that it is not an elastic material hence the conventional elastic constant is valid in the very initial portion of the stress strain curve where the curve is linear moreover it is not strictly applicable to a material like concrete but these find a place in design practice despite their apparent limitation when related to concrete as they are material properties 
that have to be necessarily considered in the conventional linear elastic analysis of reinforced concrete structures. Young's modulus of elasticity is a constant defined as a defined as the ratio within the linear elastic range of axial stress to axial strain under uniaxial loading. In case of concrete under uniaxial compression, it has some validity in the very initial portion of the initial portion of the stress strain curve, which is particularly linear. This portion is linear, but beyond certain stress, this curve becomes non-linear. Various description of modulus of plasticity are possible, such as initial tangent modulus IT. So you can see this line. So this line is referred as initial tangent modulus. And we can have secant modulus defined at some specific point as you can see at this particular point if I join this point and the origin the slope is going to give me the secant modulus also we can get tangent modulus defined at this particular point by drawing a tangent at this point initial tangent modulus is considered to be a measure of the dynamic modulus of elasticity of concrete. It finds application in some cases of cyclic loading, wind or earthquake induced where long term effects are negligible. In the usual problems of structural analysis based on linear static analysis, it is the static modulus of elasticity that needs to be considered. The secant modulus of concrete is generally found acceptable in representing an average value of modulus of elasticity under service load conditions that is static load refer to clause number 6.2.3.1 page 16 of is 456 2000 here you are going to get the empirical expression for the static modulus of elasticity as Pc equal to 5000 root Fck. Please note this is the static modulus of elasticity of concrete which is defined as 5000 root Fck. Behavior of concrete under tension. Tensile stresses do develop in concrete member as a result of flexion, shrinkage and temperature changes. As pure shear causes tension on diagonal planes knowledge of the direct tensile strength of concrete is useful for estimating the shear strength of beams with unreinforced webs etc to illustrate this consider an element as shown here which is subjected to pure shear so as you can see in this plane pure shear is active under the action of this shear stress this element is going to deform in this manner as can be seen that the diagonals like this diagonal this diagonal length has shortened that is it is in compression whereas this diagonal length has increased that is this diagonal is under tension knowledge of the flexural tensile strength of concrete is necessary for estimation of moment at first crack required for the computation of deflection and crack widths in flexural members it is difficult to perform a direct tension test on concrete specimen as it requires a purely axial tensile force to be applied free of any misalignment and secondary stress in the specimen at the grips of the testing machine hence indirect tension tests are resorted to usually the flexural test or cylinder splitting test modulus of rupture corresponds to the maximum tensile stress at the extreme fiber due to bending that is due to flexure also you can see IS 4562000 plus 6.2.2 page number 16 suggests the empirical formula for estimating the modulus of rupture as FCR equal to 0.7 root over FCK code does not provide any provision for empirical formula to estimate splitting tensile strength as it provides for computing modulus of 
structure. Creep of concrete. When concrete is subjected to sustained compressive load, its deformation keep increasing with time, even though the stress level is not altered. The time dependent component of the total strain is termed creep. The creep strain is much larger than the elastic strain on loading. It is typically two to four times the elastic strain. The time dependent behavior of the total strain in concrete, considering both instantaneous strain and creep strain in our typical creep curve is shown here. Here we can see the instantaneous strain. As soon as you apply load, there is a strain in concrete member. This can be elastic or inelastic component of strain depending on the stress level. In practice, as the stress level under service load is relatively low, the inelastic component of instantaneous strain is negligible. If the stress is maintained at a constant level, as can be seen from the curve, the strain continues to increase with time. So as time is increasing, the strain is also increasing under a constant stress. The increase in strain at any time, right? If I consider what is the strain at time t, the difference between total strain and instantaneous strain will give me creep strain. This is sometimes expressed in terms of creep coefficients defined as the ratio of creep strain at time t divided by instantaneous strain. The maximum value of creep coefficient is called the ultimate creep coefficient designated as theta by the code. So ultimate creep coefficient is nothing but ultimate creep strain by instantaneous strain. It can be observed from the graph that this instantaneous strain is less than the creep strain. Moreover, under the unloading condition, as you can see, if I remove the load, there is a residual creep strain which is left. Creep occurs under both compressive and tensile stress and always increase with temperature. The main factors affecting creep strain are the concrete mix and strength, type of aggregate used, curing, ambient relative humidity and the magnitude of duration of sustained loading. Effects of creep The exact mechanism of creep in concrete is still not fully understood. It is generally attributed to the internal movement of adsorbed water, viscous flow or sliding between the gel particles, moisture loss and the growth in micro cracks. Creep of concrete results in the following damaging effects in reinforced concrete structure. Increased deflection of beam and slab, increased deflection of slender columns, possibly it may lead to buckling of column. Gradual transfer of load from concrete to reinforcing steel in compression members. Loss of pre-stress in pre-stressed concrete members. Creep coefficients for design. In the absence of data related to the factors influencing creep, the code clause number 6.2.5.1, page number 16 in IS 2562000 recommends the use of the ultimate creep coefficient. So what is ultimate creep coefficient? We had discussed earlier. Ultimate creep coefficient is defined as a ratio between ultimate creep strain divided by instantaneous strain. This value equals to 2.2, 1.6 and 1.1 or ages of loading equal to 7 days, 28 days and 1 year respectively. So you can go to this respective clause and see this value. Also note for estimation of total deflection that is deflection because of immediate application of load and that which is occurring because of creep in flexural member by the usual linear elastic analysis is made with reduced elastic modulus. This reduced elastic modulus is called as effective modulus of elasticity as per IS 4562000. So please visit clause number C 4.1. So you have to go to erection C, go to page number 89, there you will find the formula for effective modulus of elasticity. EC is effective modulus of elasticity, EC is static modulus of elasticity of concrete which is 5000 root FCK, theta is your ultimate creep coefficient. Shrinkage effects in concrete. 
Concrete shrinks in the hardened state due to loss of moisture by evaporation. This consequent reduction in volume is termed as dry shrinkage. Like creep, shrinkage introduces the time-dependent strains in concrete. However, unlike creep, shrinkage strains are independent of the stress condition in the concrete. When shrinkage is restrained, as it often is in concrete structure, tensile stresses develop and if excessive may lead to cracking in concrete members. Differential shrinkage due to moisture or thermal gradient or due to a differential well due to a differential restraint to shrinkage can be caused for example by unsymmetrically placing reinforcement in a beam will result in internal stresses, curvature and deflection. Shrinkage also leads to a loss of pre-stress in pre-stress concrete structure. Can you answer the question how shrinkage effects can be minimized in concrete? Well, since the primary cause of shrinkage is moisture loss from the cement paste phase of the concrete, it can be minimized by keeping the unit water content in the mix as low as possible and the total aggregate content as high as possible. Shrinkage strain for design. Shrinkage is usually expressed as linear strain, millimeter per millimeter. Empirical methods are available for the estimation of the shrinkage strain for the purpose of design. In the absence of reliable data, the code plus 6.2.4.1 in page number 16 of IS 456-2000, you'll find the recommendation of ultimate shrinkage strain value of 3 into 10 to the power of minus 4 millimeter per millimeter. Temperature effects in concrete. In order to limit the development of temperature stress in reinforced concrete buildings with large plant dimension, it is desirable to provide expansion joints at appropriate location, particularly where there are marked changes in plant dimension. I recommend you to refer clause number 27 in page number 50 of IS 456-2000 to know about the provision of expansion joint. Temperature stresses also develop on account of differential temperature that is thermal gradient as in roof slab particularly of air conditioned rooms exposed to the sun or in chimneys which releases hot gases. In the design of many structures such as reinforced concrete chimneys and cooling towers, temperature load need to be specially considered in the design. To take care of the effects of temperature and shrinkage, in general, it is a good design practice to provide nominal reinforcement in concrete at location where cracks can potentially develop. Coefficient of thermal expansion. For the purpose of design, the coefficient of thermal expansion of concrete is required. You can refer clause number 6.2.6, .6, page number 16 of IS 456-2000. Here, you will find the recommended values range from 6 into 10 to the power minus 6 millimeter per millimeter per degree centigrade to 12 into 10 to the power minus 6 millimeter per millimeter per degree centigrade. This 6 into 10 to the power minus 6 millimeter per millimeter is for concrete with calcareous aggregate, while 12 into 10 to the power minus 6 is for concrete with siliceous aggregate.